All right, we have Will Tomlinson, former world champion, IBO super featherweight, or title holder. From what year was it, 2013 till 2015? 2011 to 2013. I'm as punchy as you are. Okay. So 2011 till 2013, he's one of my first and probably my last fighter I had uh, when I was promoting, managing, training, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, right. So first, give it up for – all right. So please, we'll go. Tell me. First, last, and – my everything. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> You're fucking done. All right. It's Will Thomas. So give him a round of applause. All right, Will. So um, we just talked about our history, right? So uh, 2008 we met. Is that correct? After the national uh, titles? Uh, or yeah, before we, we went we, to Oceania's and you missed yeah, out? It would have been early... Was that the 08 or 07? Um, whenever the mm. final qualifiers for the um, the 08 Olympic team were, they had a, a tournament in Canberra, and I came up to BHS and did a two-week camp up there um, yeah. before I went to that tournament. Yeah, I remember so you, sparred, you were sparred, um Hussey, I'm pretty sure it was Hussey you were sparring. Um, Hussey, do you say? I'm not sure. You're I can't remember. I know. I know. I sparred uh, Jason Crow a couple of times in that in that two weeks. I was in uh, Blacktown. I remember you um, sparred Hussein Hussein. That's actually the first time I seen you with a, uh, a top end athlete. You know, for whoever doesn't know, Hussein Hussein fought for two world titles against Jorge Archer in two fucking beautiful fights. Um, could have been world champion if it wasn't for a monster like Archer in his division. Uh, it was a '96 Olympian. Uh, Will, I remember, walked into our gym, little arrogant fat shit from Bensdale, Victoria, and he absolutely hammered. Oh, when I say hammered, it's a bit of disrespect, but he, he was an amateur and he held his own, uh, if not got a little bit over Hussey. Yeah, it was the end of his career, and um, and it was, yeah, I, I said the link, I go, who is this kid? No, I like his mongrel, I, I want this kid. Um, yeah, like he said, after that, we went to ACT to watch you qualify. Um, cause the whole idea was after you, after, if you made the Olympics, we would turn you pro. Um, I thought you had a pro style and obviously I was all right with that, uh, the way you turned out, but, um, yeah, you lost, I think it was 23, 24 or 24, 22 or something against, uh, Mark Wilson. Brent, style, was it? Uh, Brett, yeah. Brendan Wilson. Yeah. Brendan Wilson. Yeah. It was a <laughs> was great the, he fight. Was, he was the only guy. Yeah. Not the only guy, but he was. Just one guy that I couldn't get over in the amateurs. He um, mm-hmm. just it was always that little bit too good. And I reckon he would have made an awesome pro, Brendan, if he had if he had pursued that, but just never had the uh, the desire, I guess. Great, great dad as always. A good trainer, uh, doing awesome stuff with Justice Honey, who's in my opinion the best fighter that's ever going to come out of this country. Oh, this is going to be a monster. Um, yeah, Mark's been training him, and he's a superstar that kid. But yeah, so anyway, he's missed out. And then uh, Link and I went to see, see you in the back room afterwards. And, um, you know, not like Will. This is not like Will people, so don't fall for this. But he was there having a bit of a cry. Yeah, he's just missed out. His, his Olympic dream was shattered. And I walked up to him and I said, mate, trust me. This is just the start. It's all good. Trust me. We're going to take you somewhere. He goes, what the fuck do you know? You didn't fucking train for the Olympics. I fucking missed out. Blah, blah, blah. I was going to slap him. I was going to slap you. You don't understand, but I was going to slap you. And Lincoln's just stepped in, said some stuff, sweetened it up. I said, buddy, you want to make it as a pro? Come see me. We'll take you to the top. And uh, I think two weeks later, (laughs) I had a massive bend. It was a big weekend. Massive weekend. And I get a knock on the door about two o'clock and I'm Got my hair all. I used to have hair back then. It's fucking all over the door. John Abraham hair and fucking had a big mop on my head. And I uh, opened the door and there's Will with two bags in his hand. He goes, "Where am I sleeping?" And when we start, um, mate, that that's that's honestly the greatest uh, the greatest lesson I've ever learnt in sports. That if you haven't got that attitude, you're never gonna make it. You just trusted, you just went with it, and you and you trusted not just me but yourself, and you you just knew that you could make it. I don't know how you knew it. I don't know what was going for your fucking head, because mate, you had a lot of faults. But uh, you want to talk about 
that that insert where you you, know, you make, make the Olympics, you train so hard and so many amateur fights, and then when you don't make it, you fought that transition to you know becoming a professional through your head and how much doubt did you have? Um, so you know, going back to me crying in the back of the cha- the uh, changing room. <laughs> After you did. Out a good the, the Olympic trials, um, obviously, yeah, that was my sole focus for years and years through that last, you know, chunk of my amateur career to make the Olympics and then turn pro. And, um, you know, when, when I missed out on that opportunity, I was obviously gutted and thought, you know, my career and my boxing life was over. But, um, you know, what wasn't aware of, you know, what was ahead of me, which was my journey in the pro ranks, which... You know, lasted. You know, kept me in the sport for another, um, you know, ten years. Um, and you know, like that that last chunk of my amateur career through like 2007, I was rep- representing Australia and fighting at all the big international tournaments, mixing it with you know the best amateur fighters in the world, and you know, doing pretty well. So I had a lot of you know, confidence in myself and my ability to, you know, believe that I I had what it takes what it took to you know, turn professional and, and have a crack well, and have the You did make the 2007 up. World Championship team, uh, which is a big feat. Obviously, the second biggest thing you can do after Olympics in Australian boxing and the amateurs. Um, so you, you obviously knew that you had an ability, um, but how did you actually back yourself to say you would make a good pro? What made you think that moving to Sydney would do that? Well... I I knew like I knew I knew I could fight. I knew I was, my style was more of a professional style of fighting, like you know, front foot, aggressive, you know, reasonable puncher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah, you know, I always wanted to turn professional. Eventually, and you guys gave me the opportunity to do it. So as if I wouldn't take it with you know open hands and you know try and have a you know. So just do took it. The punch. Like, oh, at, at that time. At that time, Sydney was where it was where it was at. Um, Sydney was like yeah. dominating the pro scene, and that's where all the good fighters were. And I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to turn pro out of Bensdale with uh, Turk. Yeah. And you know, Turk, my my last amateur coach, he was the one that was very encouraging and, and pushing me to move to Sydney. Yeah. He's a great bloke, great trainer. Anyone that's known Paul Carroll, Turk, they call him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hardest fucker you've ever met in your life. Do not do a session with him, or you won't be able to breathe after it. Believe me. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so he, yeah, you know, it was his advice, you know, because you know, me and him, we were, he was my team, um, back in the amateurs, and it was our, his decision and my decision to, um, move me on and go to Sydney and train with Crazy Link and um, Crazy Link and uh. Have you spoken yeah, to Crazy Link lately? Yeah, I speak to him a fair bit. Um, About? Oh, depends what mood he's in. <laughs> Depends what mood you're in as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, you're right. I, I, yeah, I, I got back from Canberra. You know, I spent about after after losing that tournament, spent about a week at home. You know, got all my my shit organised and um, packed my Subaru WR, uh, WRX or no, it was RX. Whatever it was. Don't fucking build it up, mate. It was the fucking RX. <laughs> no, actually, you bought that later, the Subaru Liberty. Yeah, true. Yeah, you um, bought that later. You bought had something else. I can't remember. Some other shit box. <laughs> anyway. Drew, Don't matter now. Drove, either, drove, drove to Sydney, um, knocked on your door. This giant Turkish troll doll answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fucking did. For anyone who doesn't believe it, I handle like that. It's fucking like that. <laughs> And I uh, moved into the the bungalow on um, the bungalow at Caram <laughs> Street now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lester Road. Good, good setup. Yeah, I remember um, we used to have a bulldog named Chubbs, who's his fat fuck. And every day that Will didn't close his door, he'd sneak into his room, piss on the bed, and leave. <laughs> every story. week, every fucking week. And then, um, yeah, Chubbs. so moved. I can't remember when I would. I think I moved to um, Sydney early 2008. Yeah, you turned pro 2008, June or July. July the 4th, 2008. Oh, yeah, 4th of July. That's that's my daughter's birthday. Look at that luck, eh? So she was born 10 years after your pro debut, 4th of July 2018. Must mean something. 
But you've turned pro. Um, look, we, I think we had a pretty easy run, to be honest, in the sense that, yeah, we all cashed up. We had the right connections. You'll get fights every two months, three months. Yeah, you're yeah. pretty active. You stayed active. Well, yeah, my, you, my, first, my first two years, I had 14 fights. So, seven, so seven, your activity seven. is really important in the initial part of your career. Uh, you yeah. showed that. And you built a bit of hype. So um, what actually probably started that hype real big time with the general public was uh, the Roy Jones, Danny Green fight night. You fought Vuquan Kimbra. Now we've been through some nervous times, but that was that was one of the big ones because to me it's easy for me to say I, I picked him. He was at that point he was a black American bloke. Mate, he had half a, he had a half a name. He was top fifteen in the world. Um, I'd seen he'd just been knocked out, and I knew that the person who knocked him out was very similar to Will Style. A lot of pressure, a bit of heavy hands, constant repetitive punching. Um, everyone said we're mad. Was that, was that, was that Jason Litzow. Jason Litzow knocked him out. And um, everyone said we're mad because Will was nine fights, nine wins, nine KOs. Uh, one, one draw, sorry. He had one draw at that point, which was a head cut. Um, and Vercon was 21 wins, two losses. Um, they thought we were mad. We will went out there for the first I bell. Thought, I, I thought he was mad too. Okay, so three nights before the, before the fight... I thought I was Will's, Will's curled up on his bed. All right, we're at, we're at the hotel. We're at the hotel? No, we're at home. We're at home. You were at Blacktown back then. You were at Blacktown. Yeah. And he said, Oi, can we talk? I said, yeah, no worries. I come in the room. He goes, I want you to be honest with me. I said, what? He goes, are you fucking setting me up? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, can I beat this fuck? Why are you, why are you fucking putting me with him? I said, Will, you got this. And he just started crying. He goes, I don't know if I can beat this fuck. Yeah. You're crying. You're yeah, a bit of a fucking cry. crier. You're a crier. Yeah, I was. I love to have a bit of a cry. And uh, <laughs> mate, went out there. Will, um, he from the moment the bell rang to the moment this guy got dropped on his ass and the crowd went nuts. Um, Will was in total domination and control. Um, how did you feel walking out? Because that was the first big crowd you've walked out to. Yeah, it was well, a fucking walked, massive one. So it was like fifteen thousand people. Don't worry about the like yeah, fifteen thousand people. But remember, John John Williamson was in the in the oh, ring right. singing, singing uh, waltzing Matilda. Waltz Matilda yeah. Pretty pretty good. Um, before that even happened, yeah, interesting story about that fight. Um, I, I don't even know if I've told you about this, but I, I probably have. But um, I'll share with everybody listening. So it was the day before the fight day of the weigh-in. I wake up, I get my car to drive to the gym to check my weight on at the uh, at the old BHS gym, and I get on the scales and I was I was two kilos or something over my weight, and I was furious because I'd like did a big sweat session the night before, didn't eat didn't eat dinner, didn't have drank anything, so I thought I was gonna be like pretty much on weight. <laughs> I got got there and I was two kilos. I was so angry. I was filthy and I, I remember walking back outside to the car punching the steering wheel and I broke my right hand on, on the on the steering wheel the day before the fight. I'm not sure if you can see that little lump right there. You see no, that? I've never heard your story. You're lucky because it would you fucking that? broke your head. No. Can't see it. Thank God. That, 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 that's a, that's the a, um, calcification from the broken bone that I did that, that morning. Anyway, so I ended up going to the sauna and um, sweating it out and made weight and you know, and then yeah, next day, you know, probably out of a little bit of uh, ner- you know, fear and yeah, being extra yeah. nervous, I fought fought very like my life depended on it and um, yeah, that was like lucky for that because that was this, this that urgency and that style was what you know made Verkhon Kimbrough shit part. himself and um, and I was able to you know knock him out. Yeah, pretty impressively in the with the right, with the right hand finally left left hook straight right hand down left hook right hand straight down the pot. Oh, was, yeah, so that, um that, 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 that was definitely you know I had some TV fights and pretty good performances before that that night, but that was yeah I reckon the the night where I, you know, I won a lot of a lot of Aussie fans. Well, um. You went on from that fight, obviously started building a bit of a profile and we started getting some ratings. Um, you started going, you know, top 10 in the world. Uh, you moved 
in top five at one point, the number one in the world in WO. You were ranked in the Ring Magazine top ten overall for a couple of months as well. And we finally got the crack at uh, at, at the IBO world title. At that point, it was pretty prestigious in Australia because Danny Green had beat, beaten the Roy Jones for it and started defending it pretty often. Um, we uh, fought Alan Herrera on the on the Danny Green Velachek undercard, which had Chris John fight a Russian as well, which was a triple header, triple world title fight, first time in Australian history, and I think it's the only time since. Uh, massive show in Perth it was great, and uh, yeah, unfortunately Greeny um, was winning the fight against Velachek, but but uh, but got knocked out in the tenth round. It was a fucking big shot too. It was made anyone would have died from that shot, but. Uh, Mate, um, you fought Alan Herrera that night, and I still I watched this fight a month ago. Yeah, you know, Oz Boxing keeps putting it up, and and you just watch it, and it gives you fucking yeah. chills. It gives you chills, because um, it's a, a testament to what you represented in the ring. Like you were, look, you you really you're, you're pretty skillful. You're not shit, but you're not a you know flary, uh, beautiful boxing style like a like a Floyd Mayweather. You're a you're a Mickey Ward, Arturo Gatti, get in there and pound up and make that fight with Alan Herrera um, still one of the top fights of us because you were getting your ass whooped at times and you were whooping his ass and none of these are taking a back foot step. Um, you want to go back to that fight? Tell us a bit about it and, and how you felt. Well, do you remember anything about it? Because I, well, I remember. I fucking was, sat in the corner the looking. Oh, he's going to fucking lose. Wait. <laughs> End of the ninth round. End of the ninth round. This this taught me a lot about about boxing, and it taught me that your trainer being your best friend or the most trusted person in the world is very important. your corner is very important. You at the end of the ninth round, the bell rang and you didn't know where the fucking corner was. You could barely sit. You 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 nearly stumbled into the corner, you fell over. And Lincoln's, I've gone fuck. Link, he's gone. He, and you, he's going for the old, like mate. I'll give this to Lincoln. He's pain the fucking ass. But he under pressure, he is unbelievable when the shit comes down, yeah. And you were gone, and I've got Lincoln. I started stressing big time because I thought, is, is he about to give up? Lincoln whispers something in your ear. The ninth round, I think it's pretty sure the ninth round. He whispers something in your ear. To this day, I don't know what the fuck he said to you. You've gone out the tenth round and pounded the fuck out of Alan Herrera. Probably had your best round the whole fight, and then retook that fight because at that point you're probably only about two rounds ahead or around the head, and. Mm. You've come out ten free. I'm put on the exhibition. I mean, technical exhibition. And it taught yeah, me that, so that, much. That. Now, whatever the fuck you said there, you you really yeah. took notice of, and you took it into the, that ten free. like nothing had happened before it. What did he say? Yeah, I, I don't know, wouldn't have a clue. Can't remember. Yeah. But that ten round, that, that was definitely like the best round I've ever boxed. Uh, like my best round of boxing my whole career. Um, it was. I was throw, throwing combinations and shots that I'd probably never really thrown before. At that um, point, of at that point, I don't think there was anyone in the world that was fighting that style, that tenth round style you had. You were putting them together four or five punches at a time, and you're yeah. just repetitive in what you're doing. And mate, you couldn't lay a glove on you. Like yeah. anyone else, you probably would stop. To be honest, yeah. that's um, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. Sure, I'm not sure where it all came from. It just uh, it was like yeah, I never. I'm ninety nine percent sure like I never threw uh, through those combos before and landed them as cleanly as I landed them, yeah, you know, at any point in my career, let alone you know, training camp leading into that fight. It's just I guess, yeah, you know, years and years of, you know, being in boxing, fighting, watching it on T V, it just becomes a part of your subconscious and just it came out on the night. Yeah, well ended up winning the world title with it. Uh you defended it three times. Uh, in great fashion because you fought some pretty good fighters and dominated the first two. The third fight, you won it clearly, in my opinion, still to this day. Uh, a little bit controversial, but you fought a great former world champion, two-time world champion, Malcolm Claston from South Africa. Um, then you came with, with the idea of wanting to move to America. Great idea. Beautiful idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've been hearing it for years, but it... What was the reason behind it? And then, uh, don't pull no punches. You can be straight out. And, um, yeah, it's all over now. We're still best mates and we're still good friends with Lincoln. You know, like, um, what was the reasoning behind you wanting to go to America? Well, the re the plain and simple reason was that I, I thought I was one of the – I was 
one of the best super featherweights in the world, and I could beat I could beat any anyone anyone um, at that in that weight division in the world, and obviously like America's where it's at um, in terms of you know taking over the world. Um, so I, I wanted to I wanted to um, you know, mix it with the big boys, and even though I was you know fighting legitimate fight. No, some of the best fighters in the world here in Melbourne, but um, you want to be know, a superstar. I, I wanted to, I wanted to fight in Vegas. I wanted to be a superstar. Exactly. Right. And that's look. It's as as the guy that invested and in, not just not just money but time into you. And I, I I was never upset about it. But you know, clearly, I, I say it's be opening. You agree that you know these days it's you should have stayed here. And this might be a lesson for a couple of um, boxers. Um, in Australia, listening to this today, like, um, you know, sometimes you get your abilities mixed up with your ambitions, um, and that's not a disrespect to you, but looking back now, you know there was probably five to ten blokes that were better than you out there at that time, uh, probably five, to be honest, and, yeah, you probably could have won a world title, but you wouldn't have lasted long in America, it's just a different, it's a different game at the moment, there are years ahead of us, uh, for any Australian to go over to US and dominate, and we lost you, Will. Where'd you go? No, I'm here. You gonna agree? You <laughs> say no, fuck off, hang it up. <laughs> no, look, but look, if you would um, stay, we think that we still to this day believe that you could have been a I'm not gonna say a Danny Green or a Mundine, but not far off. You know, it's yeah, you know, things were happening, we'll start to get a bit of traction here. But look, I agreed that you go as well, but only because I whoever doesn't know Will, they have to understand. He's got a little chihuahua named Taco. Now, yeah, show the show the world Taco. Where's Taco? Give us Taco. So I'll keep talking. Will's got a dog named Taco. They say you look like the owners look like they're dogs. I don't reckon it looks like Taco, but fuck, look, actually they do look the same. Look at the nose. <laughs> but he fucking yaps the same. He's so much of a pain in the ass when he wants something. It just keeps going and going and going. So we just said, all right, fuck it, go. And, yeah, look, he's been there. At least he had a crack. He'll never go to sleep at night, true, saying that, you know, thinking, did I, shouldn't I, should I? Is, you know, you've got no questions in your head. You did the best of your ability. Um, I won't talk about too many of those overseas fights, but um, I want to speak about this one incident you had in uh, Mexico. So you're on the training camp with me, Robles, and uh, Abdel Morris's brother. What's his name? Uh, Speedy Morris. Is that right? Adan. Adan. And you were in um, in Tijuana. Tell us what happened in Tijuana. Uh, oh, it's a fucking long story, but um, make it short. Make it short. So, in a nutshell, there's no you can't you can't tell it in a, if you try and tell it in a nutshell, it just doesn't do it justice. Um, you can actually Google it. Google Will Tom. Tomlinson, Mexico, and the story will come up, which which kind of covers it. But so I was there on a training camp against uh, with Adan Mares. Got paid to go down there and spar him for a few days with Manny and my wife Jess. Um, rocked up. Manny there. is uh, just so anyone doesn't know. Manny Robles was his trainer in America. He yeah. actually took Andrew Ruiz to beat Anthony Joshua recently for the world heavyweight title. One of the best trainers in the world. 2018 trainer of the of, of best in the world. So. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, he's a really good trainer. You know, yeah, as you said, trained Andrew Ruiz to beat Anthony Joshua, Diego Magdalena, Oscar Valdez, Terrell Gorsha, plenty of good guys. Um, but yeah, so we went on this training camp um, to Tijuana, three days of sparring. We were on the final day um, and uh, finished the final day, the yeah the final day of sparring or the second second last day. We were by the pool. Having, he was having a couple of beers. We were having a swim. Um, he's like, all right, well, I'm going. I'll see you in the morning. Are you there? But, oh. Yo. 